Hello everyone, TopCon here, and welcome to the Roos Civ Overview. Let's start by going over the Civ bonuses that the Roos get. Most of their bonuses are in the form of unique buildings, the first of which is the Hunting Cabin. It replaces the mill, but costs 100 wood instead of 50. This building has two major bonuses though, compared to a normal mill. The first of which is that it produces gold every 30 seconds based on the amount of nearby trees there are to it. You get more gold the more trees there are, but even one tree will still generate about one gold per 30 seconds. They confirmed in the show match that if you cut down the trees that were providing this building with the gold, then it will still have the original value from when it was built, meaning you don't need to conserve your trees. It appears to have diminishing returns on the amount of trees because at one point it shows nine trees in the circle providing 11 gold per minute versus one tree providing two gold per minute. The total combined cap of all your hunting cabins is 250 gold per tick. The other major bonus that this structure provides is that it has the ability to train scouts from it. Most civs this wouldn't really matter much, but producing early scouts is really big because of their bounty system. And with that we'll have a look at their next bonus, the bounty system. Whenever the roost kill an animal, they will earn gold and bounty points equal to the amount of gold. Killing a sheep rewards 5, a deer 10, a wolf 25, and a boar 75 gold. In addition, if the roosts reach certain thresholds, then they receive economic bonuses. For killing any combination of animals to reach 100 gold earned, they get 5% more villager food harvest rates, and this increases by an additional 5% with each tier. They also get a shorter tick time on their hunting cabin's gold generation rates. The default time is 30 seconds, so we see it drops to 27, then 24, and then 18 seconds. So the final tier is a big jump for the gold bonuses. This means the maximum gold per minute from these would be about 250 per 18 seconds, or 833 gold per minute. So that means you're getting around 18 villagers worth of gold miners in a game. But realistically, you'd need like 15 to 20 hunting cabins to reach that amount of gold income it looks like. Interestingly, this upgrade doesn't appear to buff your fishing boat food harvest rates, so their bounty system doesn't seem to do very much on island maps. As the other part of the bonus from hunting cabins only works on forests, and island maps often do not have a lot of forests to build cabins nearby. Let's look at the rest of the unique buildings offered to the roost now. The wooden fortress is available in Dark Age and replaces the outpost. It has 2000 HP and garrisons 8 units, which is more compared to a normal outpost having just 1000 HP and garrisoning 5. The drawbacks to this are that it has a higher wood cost of 175, and takes 5 seconds longer to build than regular outposts, so it's not all bonuses here. The Wooden Fortress provides an influence buff to increase the wood return to nearby town centers and lumber camps by 20%. There are two unique weapon emplacements for the Wooden Fortresses, and each one is only added to the fortress that you purchase it on. Castle Turret increases the damage of arrows fired from the Wooden Fortress by 2, so with 8 villagers inside, you're getting an extra 18 damage in total, from the 9 arrows being fired per volley, and allowing the arrows to go through higher armored units more easily. The other option is Castle Watch, which increases the sight range of the Wooden Fortress by 6 tiles. But I'm not really sure what 6 tiles division looks like yet. The last major difference between Wooden Fortresses and Outposts is that you can pick all of the emplacements for each Wooden Fortress, whereas most civs you only get to pick one upgrade. The last of the unique buildings available to the Roos are the Fortified Palisade Walls and Gates. They have the same cost of normal Palisade Walls and Gates, but twice the health and the walls are constructed one second quicker. But the roosts do not get access to stone walls. It's hard to say how much that's going to matter at this point though. The last bonus that the roosts get before I start looking at the unique units and techs is that they get access to knights in the feudal age. They should have the same stats as the royal knights like the French have, and it's a pretty big bonus to have feudal knights if you ask me, because they can easily defend versus nearly all other feudal units and they make early raids easy to pull off. Alright, now it's time to take a look at the unique units and unique technologies available to the Roos. The first available unit is the Lodia Fishing Boat in Dark Age. We don't have a lot of info yet on this unit, other than it's somehow able to turn into other types of ships. It looks like you'll be able to turn it into an attack ship, a trade ship, or a transport ship starting in the Feudal Age, and then later on a demo ship starting in Castle. They haven't really shown much about the unit other than a few screenshots or short video clips, but I assume you'll have to pay some amount of resources to change it into another type. We'll just have to wait and see when the game is fully out to see the power of this unique unit, but from what I can tell it doesn't seem to have any unique advantages in terms of stats comparing to the other ships that other civs have. The next unique units are not available until the Castle Age. The Warrior Monk replaces the Monk and is available from Monasteries. Its regular cost is 200 gold, but it's mounted and it moves at about the same speed as a Scout. It also has more HP and the ability to attack in addition to the regular Monk abilities. When it attacks, it gives a buff called Saint's Blessing, which increases the armor and damage of nearby allied Rus military units for a short duration. It appears to just be plus 2 damage and plus 1 armor. There are several unique upgrades available to the Warrior Monk, one of which is Blessing Duration, which increases the duration of Saint's Blessing. The other two unique techs have not been revealed, 
revealed yet, they appear to only be on the H3 landmark, the Abbey of Trinity. One of the buffs looks like it's similar to a conversion circle, maybe increasing the radius of conversions, or maybe just a larger radius for the Saint's Blessing buff. Having fast movement speed on monks and the ability to attack should make the Roost able to contest relics much easier than other civs and make including monks into a main army much easier, because they will not slow down your army. The next unit may not actually be unique to the Roos, as it does not have the icon most unique units have on it. The Horse Archer might one day be available to future civs, but for now, only the Roos get it. It's trained in the archery range starting in Castle Age, and it costs 80 food and 40 wood. It looks like it can move at the same movement speed as Scouts. It has 12 damage on a 2 second cooldown with 4.5 range, making them awesome for hit and run harass. It can't shoot while moving, but it does fire very quickly as we saw in the show matches. With plus one attack, you'd only need four of them to one-shot villagers, or six to one-shot a villager with textiles. There is at least one unique tech available to this unit for the roost, and that is Mounted Precision, which increases the range of the unit by two, making it 6.5, which is actually further than regular archers can hit. The last unique unit available to the roost is the Streltsy, which replaces the hand cannon in Imperial Age. It appears to have the same stats and cost as hand cannons, but they get a buff while not moving called Static Deployment. Static Deployment increases the attack speed of the unit by 10%, and the damage by three, every 5 seconds until a maximum of 30% and 9 damage have been reached. You will lose the buff upon moving, but there does appear to be a unique tech available to them in the archery range. However, that tech has not been shown yet. It looks like it has some feet, so maybe it lets them keep the buff for a few seconds after moving or something. Now as far as techs go, there's actually a lot of unique techs left to look at. There are two in the stables, one of which is Boyer's Fortitude, which increases the health of Roos Cavalry by 20. This includes the Warrior Monk and the Horse Archer, as they are classified as cavalry. There is another upgrade shown at the stables, and it has a picture of a sword and a horseshoe on it. Uh, so my guess is that it would increase the damage of Roost Cavalry units by like two or something, because it looks very similar to the Delhi upgrade that was shown, which does that for their units. There are also four unique techs available from the Imperial Age landmark, the High Armory. These upgrades include Fine-Tuned Guns, which reduces reload time of bombards by 25%, Siege Crew Training, which allows instant setup and teardown of trebuchets and mangonels, and two others that have not been shown yet. Uh, they did click a Siege Workshop during one of the show matches, and it did not show any of these unique upgrades there so it appears that you might only get these upgrades if you choose the High Armory Landmark. There's almost certainly going to be a unique upgrade at the Dock, and probably one at the University, as most civs have had unique upgrades at those locations, but as of the time of this video, there is no public info that seems to hint at what those are. Next, we're going to have a look at the Roost Landmarks. In order to go up to Feudal Age, you have two choices. First is the Golden Gate. It allows the exchange of resources at a favorable rate, and generates an additional exchange every minute. You can see it starts with one exchange charge, and you can save them up to trade for more later on. I couldn't find any point that they clicked on this building while it was completed its construction, so I'm guessing it only allows you to use the market resource trading function and not the ability to build traders, because it does not state in the description that it acts as a market like most landmarks that function as other buildings have listed. The second Feudal Age landmark is also unrevealed, but it has been hinted that it's some sort of defensive landmark. I'm not sure what this video is in the Roost video here, but to me this looks like it might be some sort of defensive fort. Uh, so I think that this one is probably what the second Feudal option is here. And in both showcase matches, the Roost player did not pick it, so I don't have high hopes for this one. For the Castle Age landmarks, we'll first look at the Abbey of Trinity. This one acts as a monastery, and you can produce warrior monks at half cost here. Depending on what the unseen techs are, this might be really good, but just getting half-priced warrior monks for 100 gold each and having them run around with super speed to grab relics on the map before your opponent can makes it look like it's going to be a very solid landmark. The second Castle Age option is also unrevealed, but there have been hints that it's an economic landmark, and I'd guess it's a landmark that just spawns animals, maybe sheep or boar or deer, to increase your ability to fill out your bounty bonuses if you miss them. I just feel like it has to be something to help the bounty bonus. For Imperial Age, you can pick between either the High Armory or the Spaskaya Tower. The High Armory grants additional upgrades for siege units and reduces the cost of siege units from nearby siege workshops by 20%. The building itself does not function as a siege workshop, but houses four unique techs in it which I mentioned earlier. It has a pretty big radius of effect for the cost reductions, as seen by the yellow circle in the showcase. The cost reduction alone doesn't seem like much, but the unique text that we've seen already has some crazy bonuses, and with a couple more that we haven't seen, I think this will be a pretty common landmark to go up to Imperial with. The other option is the Spaskaya Tower. It's basically just a strong keep. It has 8,000 health and comes with all the upgrades that you'd normally have to purchase for a keep, such as burning oil, cannons, and springholds. As you can see, the attack list for this structure is extremely long. The landmark seems very situational, 
So if you threw it on top of a sacred site on a map like King of the Hill, or used it to defend a wonder, it could be the difference between a win or a loss, but overall it's not that interesting of a landmark and most games doesn't seem that useful. And now let's bring all these bonuses together and take a look at the general strategy that the Roost might go for. The Roost should be able to open up with a hunting cabin near instantly, especially on top of areas with hunt and trees in the same spot. Keep an eye out for that because this will give you the bonus gold as well as the ability to make scouts early on. Setting scouts to go hunt will provide you with all the gold you need so that you do not need to build a gold mine in order to age up to feudal age. Their structures do cost more wood, so you will have to have more villagers than normal chopping trees. The scouts will basically pay for themselves with the ability to gather sheep and hunt other wildlife for gold. I wouldn't make too many though, just a few, so that your feudal time is not delayed. The extra gold that you get should allow you to get one eco upgrade in the dark age, because normally the fear is that the gold costs delay your feudal age too much, but because gold is nearly free for the roos, it would allow them to spend it on an upgrade like professional scouts to allow the scouts to bring back the deer corpses. Or it would allow the roos to stockpile gold for the feudal age for a quick production of units to hit a strong timing attack. Be sure to slaughter all of your sheep if you're close to an upgrade and you need that gold ASAP. The boars should be a high priority because of their 75 gold reward, and you can throw down a hunting cabin plus a wooden fortress on top of a boar corp. The wooden fortress provides 8 garrison slots, which is also the maximum number of villagers that are able to gather from a boar at one time. This should make that area nearly unraidable, because the damage of a wooden fortress with 8 villagers inside is going to be very hard to pressure in the early game. After clearing a boar, they can build a lumber camp and get the influence bonus from the wooden fortress as well. In the early game, focus on getting as much bounty as you can to max out the bounty bonuses quickly. You can age up to the feudal age with the golden gate to use the extra gold that's being generated by your hunting cabins on whatever resources you need. Then make a few knights to raid or defend. Feudal knights are a huge bonus to make surviving feudal attacks easy as they can smash enemy ram all ins or archer pressure. The golden gate could also rebalance your resources allowing you to make a second town center without telegraphing it to your opponent because you won't show that you mined any stone. The roosts don't get much in the way of feudal bonuses other than their early knights which makes quick castle age builds more favorable in my mind. If you can get to a quick castle age with the Abbey of Trinity, you should be able to produce warrior monks to go and capture all of the relics to make up for the economy that you skipped out on while rushing to castle age. Then you could follow that up with horse archers to harass the enemy economy very easily with their superior speeds. All of these little bonuses from bounty and relics should add up to make their castle age very powerful. Even if you can't end the game from there, going up to imperial age with the high armory gives access to powerful siege units and the streltsy. So you shouldn't feel like there's a timer to end the game in castle age like some other civs might feel they'd have. Now for people playing against the Roos, making some early units to go and hunt animals could be crucial in order to delay the Roos from getting a high bounty score. Your original scout should probably still focus on gathering sheep, because the sheep also give a bounty and you're going to need them yourself. Because the Mongols can make early scouts from a stables in the Dark Age, they might end up being one of the biggest counters to the Roos, as they don't need to cut into their own town center's production to build a scout. The Roos seem to be primarily a cavalry sieve. So units which are strong versus cavalry or having your own cavalry will be necessary to keep up with them. Make sure to poke out on the map and punish any greedy hunt play. Have units nearby so you can force the enemy to build wooden fortresses, as they're not cheap. Seeing random hunting cabins around the map might be pretty common, so make sure to kill those off as they're generating lots of gold for that roost player. The biggest weakness I can see of the roost is their water play. It seems like they might just suck on island maps, because their food bonus doesn't even work for fishing boats, they're going to struggle to find hunt, and there's not even that many forests on island maps. But as long as the roosts are played on normal land maps, they're looking to be one of the top tier civs. And that'll wrap up my civilization overview for the roost. What do you think about the roost? Are they your favorite upcoming civ? Let me know in the comments. I do read every comment I get on my videos. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more future Age of Empires 4 content. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.